Hello and welcome to this week's episode of uh, Yoga Solutions. Um, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva. I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are in this beautiful world. And um, yeah, it's uh, Wednesday, the 2nd of November 2022. It's quite a pleasant day. It's been, it's been pouring down the last couple of days. So it's nice to see the sun out. Um, yeah, let's get going. Let's get on with the content. Um, today, uh, following up on some um, work I've been doing with um, some of my students, um, I wanted to deep dive into hip openers. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, it depends what you mean by that. Um, some people think of um, things like lunges as hip openers. Uh, possibly, it's possible for the back hip, maybe, you know, if you're in a lunge position. Um, you know, possibly the back hip is, is being invited to be open. But more often than not, um, the effort you feel around the front hip will be um, the hip closing. Um, another thing that people think of as hip openers is, is when you can externally rotate. So um, that, that sort of movement where you, uh, and people identify them as hip openers because they're feeling the pull on the uh, inside of the hip joint. You know, they're feeling the adductors being pulled long. Um, yeah. So, yeah, what you define of define as a hip opener is uh, a starting point. Um, what you define as hips is another important part of it. Um, some people experience tension around the haunches, around the back of the pelvis, sides of the pelvis, and they call that hips. And that's because, you know, when you walk, that's what feels like your hips are. Um, I won't be covering that so much today. I, I'm more interested in the experience of um, hips that people tend to attack when they're, when they're trying to open their hips. Uh, and, and that'll be in the groins, in the adductors, in the hip flexors, the uh, psoas muscle, the general area on the inside of, inside front of the hip joints, the joints between the thigh bones and the pelvis. Okay, that's what I will be dealing with today. So, um, first important principle is if a part of you is habitually tense and um, yeah, you, you, you kind of feel that tension in most, in a lot of what you do, then what it's telling you is that you hold yourself together there, right? The body is holding itself together in that place. Now, the reason the body might be holding itself together in that place is going to be both personal. So there'll be um, some personal reason why you hold tension there. But that's not really the bit you can deal with. Um, the, the, the other half of the equation is when you hold yourself together somewhere, you, you use that to support yourself. That's the way you hold yourself up in space. That's the way you hold yourself together. And um, with the groins and the psoas muscle, um, yeah, it's, uh, hmm. let, let, let's make this clear. There's nothing wrong <laughs> with having tight hips. Um, if, if you have tight hips, it's, that's the way your body works. If you want to change that, um, then you need to find other ways of supporting yourself. That's, that's the bottom line. Um, whatever the source reason, you know, the, the, the hips and the pelvis are very kind of emotive in many ways, because it's, uh, you know, to do with very personal stuff and uh, things like how supported you feel by the earth, you know. But on a pragmatic level, 
on a practical what, what can I do level. In order to understand how to let go of the hips, you need to feel the hips not holding the weight, uh, not holding your weight up. So, it, you know, it, let's, let's start. Uh, if you lie down and put your feet on the ground and you try and sort of relax your legs completely, right? As in, let your legs go. Most people, the legs will fall outwards, right? Most people, the legs will fall outwards. So if your legs are up and there is some sort of invisible, quiet holding pattern, that holding pattern will be your groins, your hips. It's, they're holding your legs up. So if you want to experience what it's like to not do that, you can take hold of your thighs near, near the groins quite firmly, wrap your hands around the muscles, but use the heel of the hand to just nudge the top of the thigh bone near your hips away from you. So it's a bit of work for the arms and you need to be comfortable in your neck and shoulders. So a little bit of rolling around to create more space for the top half. But then make sure that your job is to completely let go of the weight of the legs. So if, you, if I let go, they fall away and support those thigh bones a little bit away from you and if the legs fall out slightly that's okay because it um, will give you a little more sense of the space the other thing you need to do is not resist from above so you're not pushing down with your chest you're pushing down with the heels of the hand and letting yourself be propped up away from it and as you do that you allow your in insides to come up and you allow the weight of the pelvis to roll back towards the sit bones because that's where um, that's where the pelvis will travel if your thighs if your groins aren't pulling your legs towards you if that makes sense so you need to allow the opposite movement it's an extension in the spine so either you'll be pulling your throat back and hurting your neck or if you open up your throat the um, extension that follows if instead of you lift doing it with your lower back the lower back will come up passively as you support yourself away from the legs and the pelvis if the core is coming up with it you won't be pushing your belly forwards it'll be um, releasing up towards where you touch the ground underneath the head and shoulders and you'll be creating an awful lot of space along the front of the spine as the rest of the spine, uh, as, the, as the spine behind you, finds a, an ongoing sense of extension that travels up, ideally to between the shoulder blades. So that the whole of the spine is in, is in a little bit of extension. And that's um, one of the clues as to how the groin, the holding yourself together with the groins restricts you. You know, the hab habitual tuck under of the tail, which is taught in yoga, uh, with the idea of flattening the lower back. Um, the whole, the tuck under of the tail is a thing that sort of restricts inner space and restricts you from extension from the spine behind the heart. So releasing, learning how to release the hips is very important for learning how to extend. Not by, by pulling on your lumbers, not by pulling on your neck, but by allowing the upper spine to reverse, the thoracic spine, spine behind the heart, so that you become heart forwards. And this supporting of your legs uh, so that they can absolutely release their weight, together with the sense of sending the tops of the thigh bones away from you with a little bit of effort in the arms can give you a sense of space that I that you need to acknowledge and kind of map out for yourself so as you as you do this uh, even though you'll be involved with the effort of um, sending the legs away from you I'd like you to notice where the pelvis is touching the ground it'll be nearer the sit bones so you have to allow, let the tail go. Um, and I'd like you 
to see what it feels like to transfer weight a little bit from the feet to the pelvis. So basically if you were to decide to pick the feet up, you would probably pull up with the groins, but instead of actually lifting the feet, just sort of draw up the center of the feet as if you wanted to pull their weight up through the knees and then back through the pelvis. And if you do, the, if you do that with the left leg, try and disable the groin by leaning the left leg or left hand away from you. But instead what you're doing is you're using the foot to draw the weight of the leg into the left pelvis and it will dip back and yeah so you get the feeling of transferring the weight then try it with the right foot you crunch up the foot you keep hold of the leg so that the groin doesn't pull up and you intend to transfer the weight that's in the foot through the right pelvis and the weight will be drawn down through the right your pelvis will tilt back on the right and ideally um, hopefully it's already happened as you, if you try that with both feet as you sort of draw up in the feet and draw into the ground, you should find your lower belly pulling back. So this, I'm, this is not the nature of the thing. I'm just getting you to wake up the inside. So you've got this core back and up feeling and the intention to bring the weight of the foot into the pelvis allows the rest of the spine to move into more extension. You see, you're not trying to lift your weight this way that's you using your groins, you're trying to give, transfer the weight to the back of the pelvis. And if with that, you allow, let's, let's do it with the left leg again. If as you draw the weight up th through the foot and try and give it back through the pelvis, you allow that knee to fall out to the side and the foot to come towards you, you'll find some even stronger efforts in the core, okay, dropping back into the ground where you are touching on that left pelvis. And uh, if you can kind of let go of your weight through that place in the lower belly to the ground as you breathe, you'll find that the muscles around that area stay back, not because you're holding them back, but because you um, arrive in support and receive the breath from the ground underneath the left pelvis. So there'll be some effort going on there, but it's not contrived effort. When you release the breath, you can let go of the breath into that point of contact. The belly will drop and you can sort of, if you want to, if, you, if you're not needing the hand anymore, um, or even if you are, you can reach up with the other hand and imagine pulling on a rope to bring the knee towards you. And that will make your ribs do the work and what they're doing as they're pressing down through that pelvis that is relaxed back. So instead of you bringing the knees towards you with your groins, the knees come towards you from the rib cage. And you can get a sense of still resting the weight back in the pelvis. Let's try that on the other side. So uh, supporting the thigh bone away from you letting the knee drop out to the side, pulling up the center of the right foot so that the weight can transfer to the right side. You want to drop the weight into the right rather than pick up the weight of the leg. It's to do with the intention of how you do it. <coughs> if you do that with the inhale, if you do that with the inhale, you, you want a sense of inside the lower belly dropping to find the ground in order to breathe. And then when the inhale will be supported the inhale will support you. The foot comes towards you, the knee stays out to the side. When you release the breath, you can let go of the weight of that leg away from you as you drop the weight again through the belly to where you touch the ground. So there's a sense of the, the leg remaining far away from you at the groin. If you want those knees to come towards you, you need to do that not by pulling them towards you using your hips. The, the knees will come towards you when you're um, having made space in the core. The ribs, the rib cage, uses the ground underneath the pelvis to pivot the knees towards you. So it's not your groins 
bringing the legs towards you. It's the breath. It's the use of the rib cage over the space. Okay. So now you've got your knees up. Just try this, cross the ankles so you've got some kind of purchase from the feet. The feet and ankles have to be active to feel supported there. <coughs> Add support with hands on your knees. And using the purchase of your hands, roll your shoulders back so your heart is open. But see if you can let the weight of the legs fall away from you into your hands at the groins. So it's the thigh bone. You still want the thigh bone at the top to move away from you. And using the knees on the hands for purchase can help you find that action. Now that will flatten your back. But it's not you trying to uh, pull your back flat with local effort of squeezing yourself together at the front. Instead, your back will open because the with the groins far away from you, from deep inside. So there's this ongoing sense of these legs falling away from me at the hips. It's quite a, a strange feeling if you're not used if you're used to holding yourself up with your hips. Quite a strange feeling to let that go, but in if you can find that action, that sensation of creating space at the top of the hip, creating space between the thigh bone and the pelvis uh, by sending the legs away from you at the hips, the thing that does that is the is the combination of the core um, dropping back towards the ground with that pelvis and the breath, uh, the release of the breath particularly, bringing things together on the inside so that the, um, so, so that the weight basically of the legs away from you isn't caught by the spine, it's caught by the breath, by the release of the breath. And you can, you can play with this. Uh, if you need your hands there to release the groins, then keep your hands there. But ideally, you want to find support, and I'm using my feet now, the cross of the ankles, you want to find support that allows you to release space between the top of the thigh and the pelvis. And that support is coming from my feet. It's also coming from the way I let go of my weight through to the ground underneath the pelvis as I breathe. It causes a core responsiveness as I breathe, as opposed to a lift. And then to feel supported, when I release the breath, the chest has to drop, and it needs to drop through the pelvis. So that basically the rib cage uses the ground underneath the pelvis for support. So everything you're doing here is attempting to find a way of supporting yourself in space using the ground, using the contact the legs are making with each other, perhaps even using your arms. I'm imagining pulling on a rope so that my core is supported up and my ribs go down. Helps my neck feel released as well. But you want to be able to let go of the weight of the legs. The reason you get tense there is because it, it challenges the spine unless your core responses and your breathing gear is supporting you from within, you see? So finding the ground from all activity, seeing if I can let go of my weight to breathe and feel supported by it. And then as I release my weight to release the breath, there's a organization from that release of the breath as the breath finds the ground to support me. All the time, looking to not need to hold my legs together with the groins or the hips. Just that sense of space. It's a relationship that you need in all things. You now, if you bring the foot towards you by tightening your groin, then you've got a sort of imagined sense of um, a range of movement that's based on you shortening. 
closing your hips, closing your chest, closing your heart. It's okay, it gets you supported from the middle. But then you need to be able to release space. So once you've got that support, you need to be able to release the pelvis back away from you. You need to be able to release the core of the belly, uh, the core of the pelvis, the contents of the pelvis back away from you towards the sit bones. You need to be able to release that top of that thigh bone away from you. So the weight of that leg falling away from you gives you space between the thigh bone and the pelvis. Okay. So, yeah. Same here, if you pull your pelvis up using these muscles, then there's no sort of freedom for the upper spine. If on the other hand, you can allow the, this space, and I'm on the fronts of the feet to find it, you, know, you can allow the tops of the thigh bones away from you, and you can allow your pelvis to drop back from those thigh bones then the organization of the spine, well, that release in that direction is the thing that allows you to open up at the heart, you see. But if that pinches on your back, it's because you are lifting with your spine. You don't want to lift with your spine. You want the weight that's on the inside, which is related to the breath, to be given to the ground. So as you draw with the hands towards you, as if pulling yourself up, you can leave your pelvis behind, but take the contents of the pelvis up with you. And then as you send the heels down away from you, that can take the groins with it, and it can take, and it's coming from the chest. So you're left with a space that you can drop through as you land on that foot, as opposed to something that you push against to get up. You need to drop through that space to arrive on that foot as the breath arrives around this space and then when you release the breath you can give your weight away from here through that foot and away from the hip up through you into the ground so you need to be able to drop the pelvis and its contents down away from you with the heel so that you are left with a space between your thigh bone and your pelvis, not pushing up against it. You're left with a space. And that space, if you arrive on that standing foot to breathe, that space is a place you can drop through. And when you release the breath from that place, there's a release away from you to arrive on that standing foot. And there's a re release away from you up through yourself to arrive on the ground underneath the top end. <sighs> so if you manage that at both ends, both hips, both pelvises can release away from you and down with the release of the breath, with the heels. And the result is an opening in two directions that can give your weight to the feet away from the hips and that can give your weight to the hands up through the core away from the hips so there's no need to sort of push yourself up with your legs it's a release of your weight it's a release of your weight with the touch of the heels that allows you to Drop your weight, roll your weight, manipulate your weight, to roll over your hand. And if the spine in the middle, behind the heart, is the thing that opens up, it's a simple transfer of weight. So I know that wasn't a very impressive um, backbend, but um, I'm not doing backbend to impress myself or anyone else. I'm doing I was exploring how the release in the hips can allow to a, allow a release and extension in the thoracic spine so that movement becomes a release of effort of sorts, kind of release of tension. 
And uh, yeah, hips. As, as long as you're holding yourself together with your, with your groins, um, extension is going to be something that you force your spine to do. Um, whilst your groins are busy holding you up. So you need to be able to let go of your groins and your hips and that space between your thigh bones and your pelvis if you want to let go of the heart. <sighs> the reason for being tense in the groins is kind of to protect yourself against extension in the lumbars. So therein lies your clue. You know, if, if you extend from the lumbars, you can't really um, release the hips because it's not really safe for you to do so. Um, yeah. So there you go. Uh, that, that'll do. If, if, if all you got from following this is a, a different sense of that space in the front of the hips, if, if you're with that space, if you're, if you're with that spaciousness when you sit, Instead of you holding yourself up with your hips, your legs will fall away from you as you release your weight. And that release away from you is the thing that supports you upright. Um, most people, um, if they have hip tension, it's because they hold themselves forwards using their hips. You see? So it's muscle and other things. So if you can sustain that sense of space between the thigh bones and the pelvis, you'll find that there's different things going on, different activity. Um, the, the core in the lower belly tends to get a bit more involved with the breath, particularly if you can ground through your sit bones from deep inside your lower belly in order to breathe, in order to allow the breath to arrive as a cushion underneath you. And then when you release through it, that release back through to your sit bones from the groins and the lower belly will allow you to come forwards and up in the heart, you see. So it's an important area for the top half. Um, yeah, anyway, I hope that was of value. And if, if all you've got is a sense of something different, then you can try other postures, maintaining that sense through the breath and its release. And remember that what you're trying to do is let go of your weight into an outcome that you want to happen. Okay. Right, uh, that'll do from me. I hope that was useful. If you found some value, then, um, or even if you just enjoyed it uh, on any level, uh, hit the like button for me and uh, feel free to share it around Facebook and anywhere else you deem appropriate. Uh, spread the love for me and um, yeah if you want to work with me directly you can kind of do so invisibly by becoming a member of there's various options on my website um, silver membership gets you access to an ult ultimate anti-stress course and uh, all yoga solutions I've ever done <laughs> which is hundreds of them now uh, so that, there's plenty of content there for less than a five or a month um, Gold membership gives you uh, across the board access to my workshops, classes, and and uh, yoga solutions, as well as the the that course, uh, and and it gets you a free place, a free view only place on my live Saturday morning workshops. And uh, there's platinum membership for those that want to dive in deep and turn up to everything. Uh, it gives you access to the same, but you get interactive places for free. On, on my various workshops. Okay, so uh, some options there. Talking of which, I've got a Saturday workshop coming up this weekend. Uh, is that is that going to be the fifth? I don't know. It, it's yeah, Guy Fawkes weekend. I'm doing one on Saturday. Uh, I, I do I do the most Saturday mornings, ten thirty to one. I base the the workshop on a combination of the theme that I'm on at the moment and the needs of the participants. And um, it's a symbiotic uh, relationship that um, allows content to sort of be molded towards the needs of everyone there. And um, yeah, I like how that works. So that's every Saturday pretty much. Um, a Sunday week, the Sunday, November the 13th, I've got a rare in-person workshop up in Twickenham. There's a little 
group of people there that like um, that miss the old days of working with me hands on. So um, yeah, uh, they put together a workshop for me, uh, and the, the next one is Sunday week, uh, Sunday afternoon, if you're in the area. Okay, that, um, that's about it. So yeah, that's all from me. Much love to you all. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Bye now. There it is.